Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll meet a Montgomery Blair student who won first place in Intel Science Talent Search. And later, we'll introduce you to some local athletes who are taking baton twirling to a whole new level. But first, more than 50% of the county's operating budget goes to funding the school system. Council member Craig Rice chairs the council's education committee, and he's been holding a series of budget forums along with leaders from MCPS and Montgomery College. Our crew caught up with them at Kingsview Middle School in Germantown. So thank you very much for being here. Tonight, uh, we had an education budget forum at Kingsview Middle School in Germantown, Maryland. I haven't seen an uh, Talking with residents of the Up County about uh, the impending budget, both the state level and what those impacts might mean locally for our school system. And so a lot of residents were very concerned about a lot of the issues surrounding uh, reduction of teacher workforce as well as increase of class size potentials if we don't get this money from the state. <laughs> Until we know for sure, until that ink is dry on the Budget Reconciliation and Finance Act, the BRFA in Annapolis that says this is the money we're getting, you need to keep that foot on the pedal. What I need you to do is to help us get over the finish line. I promise to do my part when it comes to advocating at the county council level, when it comes to our budget deliberations, but right now before us, right now in Annapolis, they are making decisions about that $25 million. I want my $25 million back. It's, it's absolutely about the money and uh, the reality is is that money will shape a lot of what happens uh, when it comes to a lot of the decisions that each of these systems will have to make. I've seen all of you work too hard to let that money slip through our fingers. We deserve it and we need it because our kids are depending on it. Well, I think that a lot of the intriguing questions were about how then these decisions are made. This, the, I will say the past week has been like a crash course in like civics because I, all of these things I had forgotten. After the budgets are done. Forgive me, those whole budget process is sort of overwhelming to me not having a back. Trust me, I understand. <laughs> Uh, what that process entails. Where can I obtain the names of where people stand? <laughs> I would encourage folks to contact your legislators. What is the state's rationale for cutting? Is it, is it just that other things need more funding? Uh, the governor in his proposal really wanted to reduce taxes. And so to reduce taxes, you have to reduce expenditures. There's no way around it. Being out here in the community matters so much. It really boils down to uh, hearing from the people. This was fabulous. Thank oh, you for excellent. doing this. No, my, uh, really understanding that this is what true governance entails. I imagine it was just nice that you're so approachable. It really is about having these kinds of discussions uh, so that they can understand the types of decisions that we have to make. Just over a week ago, County Executive Ike Leggett announced his recommended fiscal year 2016 operating budget. Lorna Virgili recently sat down with the executive to talk more about his budget and how difficult it was to put it together. You um, officially uh, presented your recommended budget on March 16. It was a 17 minute speech. And one of the things that you, meant, you said during that speech was, this was a very difficult budget, but one to be proud of. Yeah. How did you I get that? I call the budget one of uh, challenges and also opportunities. Now, in the past, we've had to close budgetary gaps as, almost, or as high as almost a million dollars, uh, $978 million to be exact, almost a billion dollars. Uh, we had a gap this time of $238 million. We had a change in the governorship in Maryland, uh, continued sluggishness at the uh, national level. Uh, we have a very difficult uh, Supreme Court decision out there with the state of Maryland on some tax refunds. And so we've exercised a number of options in the past that made it very difficult for us to go back to revisit those options. Given that set of circumstances, the executive says he had to exercise every possible option in preparing a budget without raising taxes and providing the maintenance of effort for the school system. Now, when it comes to MCPS, he says to be optimistic in recovering nearly $30 million from the state that were slashed by Governor Larry Hogan from the state budget. But that gap reflects the reductions of the state contribution. They reduced the gap 
reduced amounts of funds to Montgomery County, thereby creating a gap. So we've closed all of that gap with the exception of the state fund. And we are working aggressively, aggressively with the governor and members of the General Assembly. And we believe very strongly that we'll be able to get at least a good portion of that back, if not all of that back. If we're able to do that, then we'll come in with a budget ultimately that's pretty close to 100 percent of what the school system originally asked for. The $5.1 billion budget incorporates a 2.6 increase for Montgomery College and a 2% wage increase for county employees. However, the executive told us that he felt that both of these increases should have been higher, but it was not feasible. Something that was left out was funding for local campaign finance. Mr. Leggett says that financing campaigns at this time would have risked other programs. This is a reform that we have to pay for to the tune of about $8 million. Uh, we passed it, I signed the bill, and I think it's a good bill and something that we should do. But you have to keep that in the context. Uh, first of all, it's not needed until 2018 election. Now for me to set aside $2 million now for that, think of what that $2 million would have provided. One, it would eliminate totally the entire body cameras of the police protection all of the health and human services programs that we, that we had to cut, uh, challenges as it relates to employees. Uh, it may have meant uh, increase in taxes. So uh, we're going to have to cut vital programs in health and human services, education, or potentially increase taxes in order to provide monies for a campaign finance bill. Uh, the bill resources are not due until four years from now, three and a half years from now. I think it would be a mistake and to suggest to do so now under those circumstances. The entire budget and highlights are available at MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. In Rockville, for County Report This Week, I'm Lorna Vigili. One more budget note. The Montgomery County Council is scheduled to hold public hearings on the operating budget on April 14th through the 16th. Residents should call 240-777-7803 to sign up to speak at one of these meetings. Or you can send your comments and suggestions via email or regular mail. For more information, visit the County Council's website and click on the queue for budget updates. There was a full house at a recent town hall meeting in Silver Spring where Police Chief Thomas Manger answered some tough questions from the community. My MC Media's Alini Barros joins us with more. Alini? I'm in Silver Spring where police officers address the community on issues related to racism, keeping kids safe from online predators, and how police and faith leaders can help promote public safety to prevent violence. What is the current protocol? for police-involved shooting investigations in Montgomery County. The Montgomery County Faith Community Working Group hosted this public meeting at the People's Baptist Church, where Police Chief Thomas Manger answered some tough questions. Uh, I'm here really primarily, primarily to listen to the folks that are here, but um, it, I, I'm also here to, to answer their questions. And if they want to ask the tough questions about you know, Montgomery County Police Department, that they have every uh, right and every reason to do that. Some of these concerns were about profiling police brutality and the use of tasers. How is it that you can go about that? Or how is it that we can feel protected and served when we have an officer that's out there who's very militant, very racist? I uh, made sure we had cameras in our patrol cars for traffic stops. Um, we started that years ago. And uh, our next step is to, is to look at the body-worn camera program where every police officer, including me, uh, will be wearing a camera as we do our job. About 15 police officers attended this meeting to hear from the community. What's important for us today is that people are reaching across communities to share issues of public concern. Others praised the department and said it was important to build a relationship of trust between the police force and the community. My concern is that we get better at making sure we teach young people how to make good decisions so they ultimately aren't being arrested and they can be great citizens in this county. For County Report This Week, I'm Malini Barrows. Coming up on County Report This Week, we'll introduce you to Michael Weiner, a Montgomery County High School senior who plays first in the Intel Science Talent Search. Stay with us, County Report This Week is coming right back. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. 
MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. April 22nd, take part in A Day in the Life of Montgomery County. Snap a pic or shoot some video and email it to pics at mymcmedia.org or tweet your pics at mymcmedia hashtag DITL. Your images will appear on our website and TV channels. So spread the word and share the fun. Visit mymcmedia.org for more details on how you can take part in A Day in the Life of Montgomery County on Earth Day, April 22nd. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. A senior at Montgomery Blair High School was recently named one of three first place winners in the Intel Science Talent Search. Michael Weiner, a young physicist, won the first place Medal of Distinction for innovation in this prestigious science competition. Take a look. First place winner, Michael Weiner. That's Michael Weiner, a senior at Montgomery Blair High School, who has just been named one of three first place winners in the 2015 Intel Science Talent Search. The honor includes a $150,000 award. Michael was recognized for his research on how fundamental quasi-particles of sound called phonons interact with electrons. What I did was I came up with a theory for how phonons, which are the fundamental particles of sound, could be emitted and absorbed by electrons, and I worked out the probabilities, and I worked out how that would affect things like the conduction of heat in a material. His work could be potentially applied to more complex atomic structures, such as superconductors. It helps with building what's called a superconductor, which is something that moves electricity perfectly. So how much time did he spend on his research project? It depends how you count it, like learning the physics specifically for this project was probably the work of 200 hours. Learning physics in general, which helped me on this project, was the work of thousands of hours. Actually the you know, insights and calculations, probably only like 50 hours. A lot of things have to come together and go right and, and he's done a, a great job and we're proud of him. I think that the award is well deserved. His research was fantastic and he put a lot of time and effort into it over the course of two years. My physics teacher has been uh, very helpful, um, you know, especially since he sponsors the physics team, which has been a great place for me to both learn and learn how to teach. He also gives a lot of credit to the magnet education he has received at Montgomery Blair High School. I've learned so much. I've had this amazing peer group of uh, brilliant friends, we have all sorts of clubs for people like me uh, and all sorts of programs to help people like me uh, you know, learn 24-7, you know, 365. I'm so excited for him. I've known his, his family for a long time and I know he'll go on and do great things. Now Michael is preparing to make a decision about where he will spend his next four years. I'm looking at MIT and Caltech. Uh, I want to study physics. I want to study very hard, very theoretical physics. Finally, if there's one thing Michael wants you to know about him, other than his passion for physics, it's that he's also a writer. I have a blog, eyesofleshandflame.blogspot.com. He works on his blog every Saturday, and the story is about a sorcerer named Dragon Eyes. He gains the abilities of dra dragons to see the true nature of things, and uh, you know, in many fantasy settings, knowing the true nature of something gives you power over it. So this is actually sort of an allegory for science, where knowing more about something gives you power over it. For County Report This Week, I'm Sonia Burke. Hundreds of Montgomery County students recently attended a conference with business professionals to learn about a variety of careers and future opportunities. MCPS-TV has a story. The 14th Annual Young Professionals Conference was held at the universities at Shady Grove campus on March 17th. More than 650 entrepreneurial and career-minded high school students mingled with business executives and educational leaders. The conference allowed students a chance to network and received business and professional advice from skilled experts. You're actually seeing and experiencing people who are all, who've already been where you currently are and who probably are where you're trying to get to. Does that make sense? If it does, at some point in time in your life, it'll make dollars. 
MCPS, the Montgomery County Business Roundtable for Education, Montgomery College, and the universities at Shady Grove organized this conference to allow students to learn about cutting-edge professions and expose them to what it takes to be successful in business. The students will have an opportunity to take what they learn here today and either feel more confident as they go on to their post-secondary plans or make it switch before they have invested a bunch of money and time in something that they're actually not um, really interested in. Many students come to the Young Professionals Conference with the idea of starting their own business in the future. Some of my goals for the future are to like build new technology and start up a business and create new applications that help the world. Some of my short-term goals include getting into a good college, getting a degree that will really propel me forward. Um, while I'm not really focused on income, I really want to find a job I'm passionate about and look forward to going to every day. These students really represent the future. The future, quite honestly, from a selfish standpoint, of potential candidates to join our respective companies. And really, they represent the ideas that will continue the transformation of the world we live in today. Montgomery County Council Member Hans Reamer recently discussed Wi-Fi, procurement, and the nighttime economy during a small business university event at the studios of Montgomery Community Media. My MC Media's Krista Brick reports. The future is really about the smaller companies, the younger companies. Council Member Hans Reamer was the featured speaker at a small business university event at Montgomery Community Media's studio where he talked about the future of innovation technology in the county and he answered some tough questions from business owners. Freeing up liquor and uh, getting more restaurants and, and uh, it just didn't sound, it didn't, I didn't connect the dots, I okay. didn't see where companies really are going to grow and the economy is going to be better for, for all of the sectors. It's an economic development strategy based on quality of life, uh, being able to offer the quality of life that the workforce wants so that the companies will want to be here as well. Councilmember Reamer is the chairman of an ad hoc committee looking at changes to the way alcohol is currently sold in the county. The formulation that will work is to get the county out of the special products, which is most of your wines and basically your micro beers. Small business owners also wanted to know if the county plans to open up its 160 miles of county-owned fiber cable to provide free Wi-Fi. You can imagine a, a situation where you have sort of continuous public Wi-Fi all along those corridors. So you're on the bus and you're actually you know, signing into public Wi-Fi that's brought to you over the government fiber that's already in the ground. The county is making progress on revamping its procurement process to help small businesses bid and win county contracts. There's not a lot of hand-holding or even answering of the questions that they might have as a small business. That process really does need to be improved. We need to get a closer alignment of the procurement officials in the county with the small business community so that businesses know how to bid, you know, and they feel confident that if they do go through that, that they might be successful. For County Report This Week, I'm Krista Brick. Coming up on County Report this week, we'll tell you about the Rockville Business Academy and how it is helping local companies. The Churchill hockey team is recognized for its winning season. And Montgomery College celebrates Women's History Month. Don't go away, County Report this week is coming right back. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit MontgomeryCountyMD.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. Down here. You illegally passed the stop school bus. I'm placing you in timeout. And this timeout means big fines, plus you really could have hurt somebody. That's why school buses are being equipped with video cameras to help kids like me stay safe. So respect the bus. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. 
Each year, the City of Rockville invites local businesses to come together to learn how to operate effectively and thrive in the city. Rockville's Katie Giardi tells us more about the Rockville Business Academy. I'm Rockville 11's Katie Giardi here at the Rockville Business Academy, where just behind these doors, businesses are getting ready for success. This is the third annual Rockville Business Academy, organized with the help of the Rockville Chamber of Commerce and Rockville Economic Development, Inc., also known as Ready. The Academy gives businesses and city officials a chance to touch base on the future of the city. Rockville is very aware of the needs of the business community and it's, it's great to see them reach out to the business community so we can, we can all grow together. The Academy met twice in March to discuss the issues that are most important to businesses. On the demographics of the city, which obviously is critical to business, and a lot about the long-term planning. I mean, what's, what's going to happen with the city 10, 15, 20 years from now and helping businesses align themselves strategically with that plan. Businesses also got a chance to give feedback and express their concerns. Uh, the methods of getting to work are the transit, has definitely been an issue, congestion, things of that nature. Uh, but they are, what I've learned today is they are working on resolving that with the bus rapid transit. Uh, so looking forward to that being put into place and seeing how it helps the local businesses. For some of the attendees, the future seems pretty bright. There's definitely some growth here in the future for the city of Rockville. Uh, so looking forward to being a part of that. It's very positive to know that, you know, Rockville has a plan and that they're doing well and we hope to be, you know, part of that, um, you know, 20 years down the road. For Neighborhood Resources Coordinator Harmon Cordero, the Academy is a great way to build relationships. Those who come, come because they're very interested in knowing more about the city and I think uh, by giving this opportunity to the businesses, we also open a wonderful opportunity for them to uh, learn more about the city, to get in contact with the staff. And those relationships can make doing business in Rockville more personal. I think the most important thing that they're learning is that the city of Rockville really cares about the businesses. Uh, about the business community, uh, not just as entities, but also as people. To learn more about the Rockville Business Academy, go to rockvillemd.gov slash city manager and click on Neighborhood Resources Program. The Montgomery County Council took time from its regular session to recognize the boys ice hockey team from Winston Churchill High School. The team recently won the Class 2A state championship with a resounding victory over the Middletown Knights. Let me just say, a 20 and 1 season record, and in the state championship, 10 to nothing victory. Right? Enough said. We just wanted to thank the council for this great opportunity. This is, uh, it's been a very special year, and it's shown as we came out on top of all the private and public schools in the area. Um, it's been, we've all been very fortunate to play with such a, a closely knit group of friends and it wouldn't have been possible without all the parents, coaches, managers and anybody else that was involved. So, thank you. March is Women's History Month and a local teaching artist at Montgomery College recently led a figure drawing workshop at the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. as part of a day of music and hands-on family activities. MCTV has a story. I think it's important to celebrate women because while we have lots of beautiful portraits of men, we have, you know, we have some of women, but it's really nice to think about the different accomplishments that women have made throughout history. And it's important that we teach not only um, adults about it, but that we teach children about it as well. And there was wind. drawing activity ties into trying to emulate that of some famous women artists who try to capture the essence of the human form and its position, not so much photorealism. So visitors, they're taking a 15 minute experiment to try that experience of capturing the human figure in its essence. I chose to be young Aretha Franklin because she's so full of life and she's just really wonderful and her music is amazing as well.
thought it was pretty neat coming in here and like uh, drawing stuff. I'm not an artist, so it's just the first time I ever picked up a piece of chalk and it was just kind of fun to do. I think mine was pretty terrible, but by the time I got to the third one, I had some improvement. I still have a long way to go. <laughs> report this week we'll meet the Wheaton dance and twirl team as they prepare for the world championships in Italy and you'll meet our pet of the week stay with us county report this week is coming right back registration for summer classes at Montgomery College begins April 6 so make plans now to sign up for the classes you want when you want them Register in person at any of our three campuses or online anytime, 24 hours a day. The MC Spring Sports Season is underway, so enjoy the warm spring weather and come on out and root for the Raptors baseball, softball, and track and field teams. Complete schedules are available online at montgomerycollege.edu slash raptors. Registration is now open for MC's Workforce Development and Continuing Education Summer Youth Program. Over 200 full and half-day courses are offered for students K-12. Classes are offered on a wide range of topics, art, music, computers, science, math, and much more. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Take what you think you might know about baton twirling and toss it out the window. This team of athletes are taking the art of baton twirling to a whole new level. My MC Media's Krista Brick has a story. They spin, kick, and do gymnastics tricks, all while twirling a baton in their hand, around their neck, or even launching it into the air. They are the Wheaton Dance Twirl Team, and they are preparing to compete at the World Federation of National Baton Twirling Associations Championship in Italy. Wheaton Dance Twirls were formed in 1959 by my mother, Evelyn Deanna, who started it out of the Wheaton Rescue Squad, and it has evolved into a full competition team over the years, from the parades that they used to do back in the 50s and 60s and 70s, into a very indoor competitive sport now. This team won world titles before and they are looking to repeat. World is a, it's a huge thing. I mean, you work up for three years, you practice for this one competition. We are gonna compete against a whole bunch of countries. I'm nervous, but I'm also really happy that I got to do this. It is not as easy as it looks. What we're able to do is because we put our heart and soul into this. The athletes throw batons like this one up to 30 feet in the air. It takes a perfect toss to get it right, and when they don't, it can really hurt. When it doesn't land in your hand, absolutely it hurts. Um, especially, it, I twirl a different kind of end, it'll scrape down your back, and that hurts really bad. The hardest part about twirling is trying not to cry when you get hit by the time. <laughs> just now I'm used to that. They really just are the most toughest athletes that I've ever worked with. The team often practices at the Discovery Sports Center in Germantown and other times at local Montgomery County School gyms. Its members, who are as young as seven and as old as 24, travel from as far away as Pennsylvania and Virginia to train with the group. I want people to realize that it's more than just the marching parades and when you say like, oh, I'm a time thriller, oh, you march in parades. So I think that it's not out there enough that people get to actually see what we work and do. To find out more about the Wheaton Dance Twirl team, check out their website. For County Report This Week, I'm Krista Brick. Now it's time to meet our Pet of the Week. Kathy Stanhope joins us with more. Our Pet of the Week here is Miranda at the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center. And here at the shelter, we personality test most of our animals before they get adopted. And as you can see, Miranda is an orange. That means she's kind of medium, middle of the road. We have purple for couch potatoes, orange for medium cats or dogs, and green for cats that by kind of vibrate or really want to be pogo sticks. So Miranda would be a wonderful medium activity pet for you to take home. Please give us a call at 240-773-5900 for more information or visit, visit us on the web at Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center.gov. 
With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for watching.